We're going over the for loop today, which is one of three controlled loops. We have the for loop, the do while loop, and the while loop. The for loop is a count controlled loop, which means that it repeats a specific number of times, either controlled by the programmer or the user. So the basic structure of a for loop is three things. We're going to start with the keyword for, and then inside the parentheses, we have three important things you need to remember. The first thing is the initialization. Next is the test, and then next is the update. And then inside the brackets is what's going to be executed if the test is true. So I'm going to kind of go through and show you what's executed first and step by step. So first we initialize the variable count to one, and that's going to be only executed once. And then the next we're going to test the variable count. And then if that test is true, we're going to execute the code between the brackets, and then we will increment that count or that variable that we initialized in the beginning by one, and then we will go back to the test, and then we'll test it again, and then if it is true again, we will run that statement of code again, and then we will continue to increment until that test is false. But one thing you do have to remember is that this line right here, or this small statement, is only executed once. If it's executed more than once, then this would be an infinite loop because it's going to keep on initializing it to one and it's always going to be less than five and it's going to keep on saying number zero or number one, number one, number one. So I'm going to run it real quick and I'll walk you through it. So you can see here that it's going to say number one, number two, number three, number four, and all the way up to number five. So we're going to initialize count to one and then we're going to test count. So count equals one. And now we're going to say if 1 is less than or equal to 5, we're going to execute line 15, which it is. So it's going to say number 1. And then it's going to increment count by 1 because we use plus plus. And then it's going to test it again. So 2 is less than or equal to 5, which is true. Then it's going to execute line 15 again, which is number 2. And it's going to keep on going to 5. And so it is less than or equal to 5. So it's going to do it one more time. And it's going to increment 1. And so it's going to go to 6. And now 6, this makes the test false. So we're going to break out of that for loop. So we're going to move on to a user input control loop. We're going to ask the user how high do you want the count to go. We're going to read in the next integer. And we're going to go how high the user picks. So you can see here that we have the for loop. And traditionally, we always use the initialization variable. And we always name it i, which basically kind of just means index. So we're going to run it. So how high do you want the count to go? We want the count to go to 10. So we'll scroll up here. Okay. So right now, i equals 0 because we made it equal 0. Now how high is equal to 10? So we're going to say if 0 is less than or equal to 10, we're going to print out line 29, which is number 0, and we're going to increment i as well. So that is true, and we're going to increment i, and now it's going to move up to 1. Now the statement is going to be true again, all the way until 10. And then it's also going to be true at 10, but after it increments one more time, it's going to be false and it's going to break out of the for loop. So once again, that the for loop is controlled by a specific number that the user inputs or we input. The while and do while loop is always controlled by a Boolean expression if it's false or true. So we're going to move on to another for loop. And this is just a, another for loop to kind of wrap your head around it. What we're doing is we're going to show the number and the number squared 10 to 1. This time, instead of increasing the initialization variable by 1, we're going to subtract it by 1. So you can see here that we have, let's see, I have it down here actually. All right, so we created a variable called number, which is going to be right here. So instead of initializing in the for loop, we can actually initialize it right there. So we're going to say four parentheses, number does equal 10. And we're going to say if 10 is greater than or equal to one, we're going to run this line right here. And then we're going to subtract number by one. So you can see here that we have 10 and then the number squared is just going to be the number times the number, which is right there. And we're going to tab over to kind of make it look neat. And we're going to go all the way to one. So one is greater than or equal to one. So we're going to show one, and then we're going to subtract number by one again, which is going to be zero, and it's going to make this false. 
and we're going to break out of that for loop when that expression is false. Let's go over the basic structure one more time. We're going to have the keyword for, and we're going to have the initialization variable, and we're going to test that variable, and then we're going to do update that variable. And then what's in between those brackets is that once we test the variable, if it's a true test, we are going to run what's in between the brackets and then update that variable. Just remember that to always have the updated expression right there, because if you don't, what you're going to have is an infinite loop. And I'll show you what that is. It's going to keep on repeating one because we never increment count. 